go on then, back to that first lap of yours then. Yeah. It's uh, alien to a lot of newcomers nowadays. Ah, morning practice. Morning, morning practice. practice. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Love them. But, you know, they, if the weather was good... You didn't have the sun, low sun have, or anything. Like but what, it's the temperature yeah. of the road, I'd feel like it Oh, was, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Manx was could be a bit dodgy. Yeah. TT was obviously a lot warmer, mm-hmm. you know, than the Manx. But uh, yeah, they used oh, to be that good. Was, that was before globe and warming back then, so the <laughs> weather was amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, that was it. Yeah, my first morning, tipped up, seventeen-year-old lad, my dad next to me, on an old classic bike, three hundred and fifty classic bike. And that was and it. What you set off? Your your dad set off as well? No, or no, you, no, you he, was just, oh, he was right, just yeah, with yeah, me, just, just yeah. so could he he raced. Yeah. It. Can you imagine what he felt like? Oh, no, 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 no one, no. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, you, yeah. If, you, if you're a son at 17. Yeah. They got, no. they got the worst job. <laughs> 17. Completely. Yeah. Yeah, I was, yeah I, was, I was young because, as I said, back then, all I wanted to do was race here. Yeah. So that was, I was just got me, got me, got rid of me red jacket, got me national as quick as I could and then entered the Manx. And that, and that was the case of literally just saying, off you go, off you go. Yeah, so it was. There was. There was no I, I could have turned up the day before, signed me forms, had me... There's, there's not many people like the only person I know would have been say Michael Dunlop was like 17 or 18 yeah. Williams the same yeah not many youngsters there's, there's, there's not, not many, many young now. like I, w- I had done British Championship and everything and I didn't yeah. come here till I was like early mid 20s yeah. yeah which to be fair I mean that's what we, me, me, me and Milky kind of look at yeah. we kind of don't like what I did yeah I'd rather you get your, that out of your system at short circuit learn your trade yeah. come over here when you're a little bit more mature yeah you know, and kind of ready for it then yeah well it's so. sort of cheap like Dean Harrison's probably the last English person to yeah. not go track race like Dean was yeah. a road racer yeah yeah and then went to BSB went to whereas yeah. like me and Pete and uh, Glenn Irwin and everybody else yeah, has yeah. sort of come even like say Craig Neve and, and Mike Brown's probably an exception he's, yeah, he's yeah. the other one that maybe did a did some a road racing, that, yeah. but it's it's not it's more normal now to yeah. do track racing. It is, and then yeah. it is. And do you think that is to 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 crash a little bit to to get yeah get used out to what system. it feels like to crash yeah. have a bit of a yeah have or, one or that kind of hits you crash. and no get to yeah, the get point to that where yeah, you yeah. stop crashing yeah. because yeah because yeah. if you, you don't at, if you don't reach your limits you you never. Yeah. I mean, you look back at uh, Guy Martin and Michael's early career that they did some crashing on the road. Yeah, and they got away with some lucky stuff, but yeah, ideally that's what you want to get that out of your system first. Learn like, what. Like, realistically, Gay had like he crashed once for oh. me at the Ulster, a massive one. Then yeah. he had the massive one at the t- two big ones at the t- the big one at the northwest. He yeah. went off the cliff like down yeah. nearly into the sea. So oh, in my time of racing, he's had three massive. Iron ones. Gate at the, yeah. at the seven hundred went straight yeah. into the wall there. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, so big. Yeah, yeah he was oh, yeah, seriously yeah. lucky. Bloody hell! Uh, so what did it feel like as a seventeen-year-old then? Well, it felt great. <laughs> Being let loose. Yeah, because at that I age, you don't care. Do oh, you yeah. think? I think, well, this is it. This is my dream. I'm only 17, and I'm doing... Someone let me do this. So I'm actually on this grid. And you, and you say that to people now, don't you? You say, you can't believe how honoured you are. How many m- millions of people oh, yeah. would just love to do what yeah. we do here? And you're, you're, you're absolutely so lucky and privileged to be able to, to, be able to do it. Did That's you know where you were going? Uh, yeah, well, I was all right then, because as I said, I've been here with me. Yeah. and whenever he went for a lap I was in yeah because I wanted to learn it yeah. and then I got a V for victory for Christmas and that was it I was just up most kids were up in the bedroom watching other stuff <laughs> I, was watching, I was watching V for victory every night yeah uh, I probably yeah. saved you a fortune <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but if you look at the quality of that now oh yeah the camera's all Can't over really the see quality much, of it yeah. yeah you done well to know it was on the Isle of Man never mind, never mind where the track was going <laughs> yeah. so, I, yeah. so once you once you'd done that you were clearly destined to, to be at the TT for a, for a long old yeah. time. It didn't at any point during that kind of first week, two weeks of coming. Did you scare yourself at any point to be like, well, I'm not, I'm not sure I know this now. Uh, not that I scared myself, but I, I came over an incident. Uh, a, a guy overtook me going down into Hillbury, and even though I was a newcomer, and he went into the corner that early and quick, I went, oh. <laughs> Yeah. Never seen that line before. Yeah. Yeah. And he ran out of road and hit the bank on the outside. And I went straight from this, went oh. between him and the bike and just went, f- oh, they were all straw bales then. So I just yeah. went f- straight through this straw bale. Uh, and uh, I pulled in that lap because I was like, oh my God. And mm-hmm. there was straw everywhere and all that sort of thing. And I was thinking, poor oh, blimey, but no, following me. Yeah, never come even on. Yeah, never come even on, let's get going again. Yeah. yeah. 
No, I mean, obviously, we all have those moments. We have those moments where you sit down and you think, but... Well, that's, yeah, that's kind of why is. I asked that question back at the start about how safe can you actually ride it? Because especially when you listen to the boys at the top, yeah. oh, I had a moment here, I had a bit of a moment there. Yeah. But, but as a newcomer, the idea is to not have any moments. No, because I always say to the newcomers, the last thing you want to be doing here as a newcomer is scaring yourself. Yeah. Because as soon as you scare yourself, you lose your confidence. And motorbike racing is all about what's between the ears. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. And as soon as you start losing yeah. concentration or, or confidence, you're not going to go quick. So that's why I always say, just little bits. Never go for the big, oh, I'm going to break here, oh, I'm going to go through this flat. Yeah. You know, just always little tiny increments. Each lap, just a little bit quicker, a little bit quicker, a little bit quicker. And then that breeds confidence. That then breeds your smile. And yeah. you start enjoying it. And yeah. you just get quicker without it. knowing it. Yeah. But it's funny, like, I we were talking about a young kid earlier that's come this year and he's obviously going really well. And my first question was, is, does he look good? You know, because like, I know rightly that yeah. they have loads of people that they know that are watching in random places and they go, oh yeah, yeah, he was good through here and he looked good there and I was watching here and, and that's the first thing. Do you know what I mean? If you're going quite well and you're, like we call it like in the middle of the road, yeah. not, you know what I mean? Not in yeah. the gutter, not in the, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Then that means he knows where he's going and he's not on the limit of running out yeah. of road yeah. firstly yeah. and being dangerous. You know what I mean? And they, yeah. they would then, you go listen about yeah. a couple we, of we have eyes everywhere. Yeah, they have yeah. they have a couple of people going. Yeah, and they'll say you would say it, and we and we rely on yeah, like yeah. to Lee and that yeah. Lee, or, Lee or John or someone kind of say look have a word on him. Yeah, he's just just have a word, just chill him out a bit. Yeah, so everyone looks after everyone yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, well, that, 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 I think that's the one thing you find out about the TT. Yeah, is everyone will look out out for yeah, everyone. everyone helps each other. We're all and mates, aren't yeah, we? We're all respect, here for the same reasons. The respect and, here. You won't get it at short circuit. No, no. Like, right. it, like if I'm not, if if you're lucky enough to get in the winner's enclosure and you've had all this faff and everything, and it's yeah. maybe twenty minutes, and there's still someone riding in, and I would always wave or clap because I have got as much respect for that guy, yeah. whether he finished fiftieth or whatever, because he is set off. He's been bricking it at the start. Yeah. He's been nervous. He's left his way for his kid. You know, yeah. he's done everything you've done. He's yeah. done. He's best. done the same distance. He's done his best. You know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. so the, I have as yeah. much respect. If I was sitting in Park Fermi at British Championship, I wouldn't even look. I'd get a tighter look at the boy that's on the podium with me. Do you, know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. you, don't, you don't care. Yeah. No, you you yeah. literally don't care. Do you know what I mean? It's probably some jumped up kid yeah. that his dad's paid for. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it, there's just no real level of, of that respect, respect that's yeah. there compared to. So it's, it's, it's that, just that kind of place, isn't it? Yeah. It's just it is, it's individual because you are. It's a time trial at the end of the day. So yeah. It's your battle against the course and. Some people are obviously naturally better than others, but uh, you know those boys are fulfilling their dreams, and they if they set a PB, you know they're as happy as what oh, yeah. you're happy. Yeah. Uh, and I remember me, I'm, I feel sorry for you kind of guys because throughout my career, when I was kind of tr you know half decent and looking to get a good result, the only pressure I had was my own pressure. Yeah. I never had outside pressure, but these boys, you know, sitting on that grid and thinking, you know, I. I'm under pressure here. Someone spent a lot of money to, to put me here. The best story ever, I mean, we were talking about it last night, actually. Michael Rutter's staying with me. He always stays with me at the house because it's free. So, <laughs> so, and I, I remember this clear as day. It was Onda's 50th year, and on, Michael yeah. was riding for Onda that day. And we were, we were up on the grid and getting ready for the, the F1 race back then, I think. I think yeah. with Simo, no? Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, his team, yeah. So anyway, anyway, we all, we all went off and, and uh, we finished the race, came back later and then I was speaking to Michael. Michael came, I don't know where he came, third or something. Yeah, because Simmer won. Yeah. And uh, and uh, Michael was like, and I said, all right. He said, he said no, he said, Onda really pissed me off today. So I said, what? He said, just before he was due to go on, the main boss from Onda tapped him on the shoulder and said, Michael, we have to win today. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine the pressure of that? Unbelievable. Yeah. But this is what I said. I never fortunately had that, but you have, John has, and yeah. Peter has, and I know at the end of the day, it's still... Nobody outweighs what you're one. That's exactly. The, that's but, the one thing that I always sort of yeah. rely on, no matter how much somebody else... Even the say, like, people say silly things to you, especially when you're injured and stuff, they say silly things to you, but... Nothing outweighs the want. The of, pressure you're But the so funny, the reason I remember that was because my mechanics now were there with Simo and yeah, that. Yeah. And the Simo won, I think, both races that week, the Superbike yeah. race or whatever. But the Honda were having a big party. And 
uh, Simo couldn't be bothered going, so they all him and the lads went to Port Jacks instead, to the chip shop <laughs> instead of going, going to the party. Can you imagine that happening now? You'd be sacked for an yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's unbelievable that. Yeah, well, I mean, it was, yeah, it was kind of a bit more old Different school back time. then. It was more old school back then, yeah. So compare the two. What what was it like for for you back then as it is now? Like Lee said, the amount of people that are just on a grid nowadays is. Oh yeah, I mean the the the, the TT has gone to a new level now. Yeah. You know, there's no doubt about it. What what the department have done, what Paul and his team have done, is incredible for the TT. It wasn't it wasn't anywhere near that back in when you know, back in the nineties. When he came, it was probably at its lowest. It was, yeah, it was. Oh yeah, the the grids were down, the the gaps in the field were down, but now it's I mean it's super competitive now, and it has gone to a new level, and that obviously brings on other other stresses pre- uh, yeah pre- and mm-hmm. as i say you know back <coughs> back when i was doing it it wasn't the, the grid wasn't as close as what it is now yeah you know even now that the guys trying to qualify or the guys you know the 30th place 40th place they're having to work so hard for that now yeah really hard for that uh but you know it's, it's the nature of the beast isn't it yeah. when you make it like it is now, and, it, and it's more popular, and there's there's more TV coverage, there's more sponsorship coverage. Naturally, that breeds more c- competition. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I mean, we all love the TT, right? So it. it had to it had to have something. It had to have that injection of something to to bring it back through that those poor days to get it back on its feet, like it, where it was in the sort of maybe the seventies and that. Yeah. Where do you think it would be now then? Without. I don't think it would. I don't be think it'd be here. Oh. Not at all. I wouldn't say that to Paul because I don't yeah. want to blow any smoke up his back. No, no, he exactly. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's not seeing this. He? He's not lacking in any confidence <laughs> as it is. You know no, <laughs> no, but it needed it. But, but genuinely, it could have. It oh could yeah, have just, without, yeah, realistically, yeah. Matt. Yeah, yeah, because nothing can stand still, especially of this this nature. Yeah, because coming back to you saying as well as like the newcomers and helping them out, the amount of work we do all year round with the course. I mean, no one really sees it, but we're making improvements every year with the course, resurfacing, more rec to sell, more line paintage on there for, for, for markers, for riders to use. You don't, mm-hmm. you don't see white paints a lot of places. You think, what's that for? Yeah. That's just markers that we put down to teach newcomers. White line, white line, white line, or you got look for this white line or that white line. So right. We're constantly doing all this, and, and like for this year, we took all the, the, the bank out and all the, the old fencing out at Casey's Corner, which is unfortunately claimed a few over the years so everything's evolving and yeah. if you don't do that well that, ag- again like I said it goes back to that thing that if anybody watches the TT whether it be a news report or jump on YouTube the first thing they see is houses yeah. l- lamp posts yeah. and stone walls but like you said yeah. there's so much going on to it's, it's, oh, it's you'll never sanitise it completely no, you the can't. amount of work it's that impossible. does go off that never really gets mentioned but, is, is yeah. unreal the big thing is these amazingly beautiful on boards that are crazy fast but the normal human brain just sees danger flying past you know what i mean they don't yeah. go oh look there's an air fence oh look they've yeah, took yeah. them trees out oh look there's yeah. white lines they yeah. literally go house phone box wall tree do you know what i mean that yeah, that's yeah. the nature of yeah. the not knowing whereas if they were actually educated and didn't jump on the fence of yeah. or jump on the the case of yeah. negativity yeah. then you know what I mean but they, they've yeah. got no interest in being educated they just want the no, quick this story a, or they want to jump on it and yeah and this problem isn't it, with old social media so why yeah. isn't there stuff there well because it doesn't need to be there yeah why yeah. doesn't it need to be there because well, you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> yeah we, we'll put things where we yeah. know where it needs to be and, yeah. and work on those areas and keep working on those areas but so that's what that's what your new role is yes as yeah what, what do we class it as what, what's, what's it, what you're called Oi, oi, oi! Is that it? Head of infrastructure. <laughs> <laughs> what a load of rubbish, isn't it? That's what you show at when you want them. Oi, oi, oi! Do this. So basically, yeah, everything about the course is kind of under my kind of remit now. So I've yeah. just got to make sure the course is basically the course is ready to hand over to Gary to say, right, yeah. we're going racing. Yeah. So and right up to the point of like sweepers and you yeah. know leaf, you know, literally cleaning yeah, yeah. it, ready to go. That's yeah. and then you he'll go and do a. Track inspection. Track inspection and sign then it sign it, it off. And and then that's it. That's yeah. So we're, we're already, I'm already working with the DOI for resurfacing next year, mm. getting trees cut back and buying more rec to sell safety stuff. And yeah. all that's already underway now for next year and, and what have you. I didn't know this. That's actually really interesting. Yeah. yeah and see. then on the event, I'm now up in the tower with him. So deputy, deputy clerk course whilst the event's yeah. on. So what's, what would you say is the biggest change that's been made in the, maybe the last couple of years? 
either to improve safety or to improve the track for the for the riders? Uh, I, there's there's not just one thing. I, we, there's just loads of stuff that we've implemented since mm. since I've been in a position where I can kind of do it. Yeah, which is brilliant because yeah. all the years I've had we're just trying to say, like, can we do that? Can we do that? Can we do that? Because realistically, as well, some of the or maybe there was no one really, just one person, but anyone else yeah. that was putting an input wasn't didn't have thirty years of. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He knows yeah. every yeah. bone, patch of tarmac, yeah. and the reason, the risks for why he wants to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Them's all the. That's yeah. the benefit of, or that's why you are doing the job. Realistically, you know, you've, yeah. you've, you've studied for thirty or twenty or yeah. thirty years, yeah. and he's now more than qualified than anyone else to, yeah. to do the job. That, but yeah, no, it is, and it's exactly that. So we just a little bits because you can't do big bits because you haven't got the money. Peter has still got this misconception yeah. that it's an open checkbook. It's way nowhere near like yeah. that. I've, it's like a constant, not a battle. But it's a constant trade-off with the DOI about how much we can spend to yeah. what we can do. Because to them, it's a road. Yeah. They've got other roads around the Isle of Man that, are, that need work. Plus, you need it's yeah. anything like anything in the council. It has to have a reason, or a you have to have a you yeah. go with a, a portfolio saying, "Well, this is yeah, why," yeah. and like a full. Yeah, uh, and this is why we're working now. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm in the process of actually getting stuff done for 25 now. Really? Because that's how far in yeah. advance some some things have to have. Yeah. When you start talking government and and. <laughs> Plans and yeah, you've got treasury to and budget and you know it is it is yeah. uh, it is our work because it's a bit frustrating for me because I oh, I really want to do this I really want to do this yeah and we can only do so much, so much but each year we're doing a lot I mean we did a lot for this year's TT I'm, I'm, you know they, we did well this year with resurfacing and other bits and pieces but there's more to come next year and we'll just keep if I do this bit with a course and we do the bit with the newcomers and of course I a little bit you know. Helmet companies are doing better, leather companies are doing better, tyre companies yeah. are doing better, and it all comes together yeah. to make it more safer. Yeah, if there's 2% of everyone, then it's... it's brilliant. I mean? It's a yeah, huge yeah. difference. So going back to newcomers then, yeah. uh, I was going to ask earlier, has there been many that have turned up, done a lap and gone, done all the homework, been really excited about it, done a lap and gone, it's not for me? Yep. Has there? Yep. With two, two that have done it, one that was, one that was an ex-World Chapman. Oh, right. Yeah. And so it was average. A, and it was average, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. Average. And this is something else we, we always say, look, look, lads. You'll, you'll know. You know anyway. You'll know. You know. Yeah. There is absolutely zero pressure on you. We are not putting one ounce of pressure on you. We want to come you we want you to come here, have a good week, enjoy yourself, go home. It's a, it's an apprenticeship this. Yeah. yeah. It's three, four, five years before we you're gonna be anywhere near looking yeah. to be near the front. Mm -hmm. So and and all conversely at that, any time you say, Johnny Brilliant. I'll shake your hand. We'll go for a beer. Yeah. And yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't want any pressure at all, and you can do what you want to do. And which newcomer did you kind of look at? And I know you're probably not supposed to, but you look at and you go, they're capable of something special, those boys. I've, I've, I've publicised one. That for me, in all the years that I've done it, that were, that were I'd class as my star pupil. Yeah. And it was Josh Brooks. Really? Yeah. 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 He was amazing. Amazing from. Every, every aspect as a person but he's a quite he's a very Josh is a very intellectual yeah. person yeah. you know he's perceived as this real nice yeah Aussie <laughs> bad boy whatever yeah, but no, he's, he's a not. genuine he's a, he's a he's a real good, nice bloke good and of person course, of course we're in these cars for like hour and a half yeah. a lap and we're doing laps and laps every day so you, you kind of you're not just purely talking about oh yeah it's life and, you know you're stuck yeah. in a traffic jam you've got to talk about something yeah yeah <laughs> And he was just a real nice, genuine family guy, and he got to a stage where you know we talk about each other's like mums and dads and kids and what you're doing yeah. and this and that. And but conversely, that his his, atti his attitude to it was just yeah. spot on. Spot I, on. I actually said before this year's TT, I said if he comes back, he'll be on the podium. And he's got every he, uh, yeah. I've actually got, got a, re potential. a really funny story about Josh. Josh Here we go. I, I knocked him. <laughs> I knocked him off into the Craig. I come down to break. We weren't even racing, obviously, because we were different numbers. And I went to break, and I had a tank slap on my, and I knocked my pads back, and I went, well, I got the lever back. But by the time I'd lever back, I'd, like, made a load of ground on him and went in and knocked the two of us off. And I'll, I'll never, ever forget, like, proper, you're, you're doing a decent speed. It's not oh, fun, uh, but yeah, you're doing yeah, a decent yeah. speed. I'm yeah. telling you, into the yeah. air fence, wrecked it. And I was still, like, sort of buried in the fence, and he got up, and I, I swear as I sit here now, the first thing he went, oh, you all right, Lee? 
I was like, yeah, yeah. And my dad was there doing the pit board. He went absolutely mental. He went, you stupid little fucker, what are you doing? You've knocked them off. He was going, you all right, Josh? And he was and he was like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, honestly. Yeah. So my dad then drives me and Josh back to the pit, where, and he was absolutely... It got to the point in the car where Josh was like, listen, Everett, you know, it's all right. You know, I'm all right. We're done. All, you know, yeah, we're done. Yeah. Leave him alone. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. And I honestly, to this day, I would never have someone if i was sitting somewhere and someone was slagging him off i would i would say something do you know what i mean i've got if you can get knocked off your motorbike right and and the first thing you say is oh you're all right mate yeah do you know what i mean that takes some that takes some person to do to do that do you know what i mean and and he is like he's he's a genuine good bloke i think he's capable of because he's he took a few years off took five years off didn't he before he came back is he capable of yeah, yeah. I wins, think he would have won wins, if he hadn't done that. He would have won a TT. He would have won. won he would have won a TT bike yeah. for sure. One of the big bikes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Big or old either, school. either or. Yeah, because yeah. he's a quality off road rider and he's a yeah. quality BSB rider. Do you yeah. mean them's the two best? Yeah. You know, if you're not afraid of bumps and jumps and you're unbelievable on a short circuit, yeah. What, what so. more do you need? Do you know yeah. what I mean? And he loves it. Yeah. And that's another thing. He, you know, he wanted to come back. Yeah. We didn't kind of approach him or that. He he said, "Look, can I come? I want to come back." And he. I don't think at the time when we first started talking that Faye, he hadn't mentioned it to Faye, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think Faye initially wanted him to do no. it. But he pestered her. He said, oh, please, I want to do it, I want to do it, I want to do it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. we saw him the year before last. He came over, didn't he? And he was he was just here as a fan. And he just, he yeah. was, I remember he we comes, had him on the podcast. He come every year, like him and Crocker. Yeah. And that would and come every like, year, right, dirt bikes. Because he got me yeah. footage from my vlog. They took cameras out for me and Brilliant. stuff. Him and uh, yeah, him he did and, and got some footage. So what about yeah. newcomers in the future? Have we got have we got a breed coming through now that, that, yeah, that we're looking I, after? And yeah, I mean, we 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 normally historically after the Manx, we then start right. The Manx that's finished now, right? Like, let's kind of focus on TT and stuff. So shortly now we will be starting the, the whole newcomer process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about people that you know looking to come over, or not only that, but we'll also be looking at some of the, the real real good talent that we got here at the Manx mm-hmm. Grand Prix this week. Yeah, yeah, we're going to look at them. Like, right, okay, look. It's time now. I can understand some boys wanting to stay and win the Manx. I, I get that. I get that. But some some of them just like say, right, if you want, you're more than capable of coming to the TT now. Yeah. And if that's the case, they'll then come in under us as well and we'll give them, even though they've done a meeting here, Yeah. You know, me and Milky haven't been really involved in their training purposes for the Manx Grand Prix. Mm-hmm. So they come under our wing and we, we do the same. See, I, I think them, that yeah. would benefit you far more do you know because then you're saying things like and it actually means Mean sense. something it means something yeah. Yeah, yeah. he knows what that feels like and yeah. he knows what that curb is he knows where the drain is he knows yeah. where the bump is yeah. so then that's like a double whammy of yeah you know taking it's, a, learning. it's yeah. like yeah. getting it getting yeah. all the senses in the bank and then going yeah. right now give me all your yeah. information i think that would be a far bigger yeah. jump than but this is the thing people think as well yeah newcomers think that once that once they start that first practice on their own that's 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 us washed hands of it but yeah it, i said no yeah. we're here all week because we often say that you're going to get to a stage where you just need to race this place yeah and that's what we want you to get we want you to know it inside out in a car yeah. So yeah. all you have got to do now is learn it at speed. Yeah. Uh, and then, but guaranteed you after that first practice session, you're going to say, right, what about this? What about this? Oh what yeah. About? And on year two, mm-hmm. we say, look, we're always here. We're here yeah. for everyone. You yeah. Know? Uh, but yeah, you, uh, you'll still be learning stuff. Oh yeah. You're still you, this. And this, I'm an ancient. Uh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Plus also, this track evolves. Yeah. This track, this track's a creature. Yeah. Every year, it, it's different. Well, like you said, with the well, way you're doing it. Well, just said yeah. what they changed this year. I don't know that. You know, I was yeah, sleeping, so sleeping that, yeah. and then. So <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it evolves. You know, one area the bumps go, and then all of a sudden another bump appears. Yeah. So you, it's, yeah, it's, it's like no other place. Right. Well, you managed to go an hour. Cool. Without talking about yourself. Brill. Can we not finish off with like he, a he little... Was, he wasn't laying when he <laughs> said he could... <laughs> he could no. A little bit. Yeah. Just say my what? name's Johnny Barton and I'm amazing. Well, you, Straight it down the left. One, one of the first things was was I've I've travelled all over the world and pretty much raced everywhere. Yeah, I've done a bit of a so went to Daytona, yeah. raced to Daytona, won. Mm. Yeah. Uh, went I to actually, Ma- do you know do? what? Someone to said Macau. that to me earlier. Yeah. Yeah, and I did world endurance for a good number of years. I've done about 14 24 hour races with McGuinness. <laughs> one year he came he came and rode with us and that. 
uh, did European Championship. The, 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 remember the Super Mono European yeah. Championship that followed the World Superbikes Super around? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did that for did that for two years as uh, as well as all you know, the you know, the Irish Roads and yeah. the TT and BSB for three years. You know the way you did the TT first. Do you think that is like taken away from all the rest of it? Do you know because like I I did British Championship and I did yeah. some races and everything. Yeah. And then I got to do the TT and then I thought, holy shit, this is like amazing you know after even the northwest but do you think that that was a a negative not a negative because it was amazing getting to do it at 17 but it was almost like the whole reins were taken off and you'd tasted it and then everything else is because everything else isn't as good no it isn't yeah no you're right it is it isn't but it not to belittle them like obviously no, doing, no, you know, yeah yeah no it, yeah no you're right it, yeah but in certain <laughs> apps, in certain things, but my old my old man would say that I, for me short circuit career, I came here too young. Yeah, I should have concentrated because he he thought I'd have done a lot better at BSB yeah. and other stuff if I just really concentrated on that at that age, rather than I was like no no I just want to go I want to go TT yeah and then uh, I kind of I kind of I did BSB seriously for three years and did all right. Uh, but yeah, that was kind of it then. And then I kind of thought, right, okay, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make the grade at BSB. So I might as well go off and do some stuff that I'm gonna really enjoy. So that's when I got yeah, into the, they got into the world endurance, yeah. a bit of this European stuff as well as the TT Northwest. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Right. Wouldn't well, change a thing. We need some more stories, so we'll get you back for another part. Cool, no worries. Of all the racing and the Macau stories. I don't think that's oh, allowed on. Better not. Well, no, it's all right. Except when we, when we've been first, why? We can talk about that. All oh, right, cool. Oh, you should have said that earlier. <laughs> we could have started with we could have had a whole episode on Macau. I just, I just yeah. like saying that. Even to when people. he, you know, when he's going to say all these things, I'll go. I've no idea what you're, you're talking about. As soon as I've been, been to Macau, I'll just, I'll just say we'll talk about Macau and just, just have a look at the face, see what kind of reaction you get. Because yeah. normally it's like, mm. pass. Hey, but it, how cool is it? Go, yeah, that was for the first wave. <laughs> 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 but it's been an absolute pleasure. No, thanks for having me. Thanks, it's been good fun. Real Thank good you. fun. Thank cool. you. What a geezer. Fridge freezer. Crowd pleaser. Johnny Barton, eh? Oh, that was good, but the last bit just didn't quite it rhyme. Matter. But what, yeah, what a bloke. What I tell you what, he's had a big influence on my TT career. He's had a big influence on pretty much everybody in my generation's TT career. So, yeah, he's definitely a good guy. Well, that's it. And I think you said it earlier. You might not even said it in the podcast. Just about everyone that lined up at this year's TT would have gone through his academy, would have had some form of connection with him and he'd have taught yeah, or, or given bar, tips and stuff. Yeah, bar Rotter and McGuinness who it was like wasn't even in colour when they started. No. So um the whole island was black and white then I think. Um yeah, bar them, I think that everybody of the Nick sort of generation is has been through Milky or yeah. Barry is for some sort of a tip or a education or and the passion's still there, isn't it? Oh. He's, he loves it so much. That's why, like, you see him and Milky together, it's like they've never done a lap right. Well, not with their knowledge, but with their enthusiasm. It's like they can't wait to get out. And they're like that in the bloody yeah. higher car, you know, driving yeah, around with you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What a boy. I think he's going to be a big part of your TT career. Do you think? Yeah. I think I could teach you. I don't think even he could help you get round. <laughs> Milky, John McGuinness, Johnny Barton, Lee Johnston... No one's going to help me get around. Oh, mate. You just need some sort of a magic pill, I think, yeah. A blue one. Sleeping tablet. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. Another episode of the TT Podcast in the can. Make sure if you've not listened to them all already, head back in the back catalogue. There's some cracking ones, especially the fifth one. That was a great one, wasn't it, Lee? Unbelievable. One of the best. Unbelievable, Jeff. Unbelievable. But you can check them all out and be sure to check us out next week when we drop a brand new episode and hear is a little teaser from that. To be honest, for me, it happened like really early. My, my first memory about the TT is when I was like five, six years old with my parents. And my parents and their friends were talking about a like crazy motorbike race somewhere in England where, you know, public roads get closed and people just race their bikes around there. And I, I was like, what, what the fuck is this? And, <laughs> and I was asking them and they told me oh, that's the Isle of Man TT. That's my very first, first moment about the TT. 
Now, the first place to watch that is right here on TT Plus a week earlier than anywhere else. And make sure you check out IOMTTRacers.com for all the latest news and features. And across on socials, we're at TT Racers Official. Lee, do you want to plug your, your own Instagram? Too late. Bye, everyone.